just hang out. Yo, I think we're live. And my old, old computer seems to be working. You guys let me know. Any issues, say hello. I think we are live, and I just wanted to hang out on this beautiful Saturday and say hello to everybody. Um, please hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button. Consider becoming a member. Everybody could use a little bit of support and help, and, and hopefully I earned your uh, subscriptions and your memberships and your love. Um, that being said... Let's say hello to the early birds. We got Corn Diff. It looked like he's online. How you doing, Corn? Hopefully you reconnected with your brother. I just did recently. Um, you know, he came out of the rehab or the outpatient or whatever they call it. And we hung out around Easter. And I just remember the story of you and yours. So I hope everything's good with you. So I wanted to say, you know, blessings to you, Corn. And again, thank you for the support and being on your podcast back in the days. Maybe I can do it again, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes for me. But it's okay. It's a beautiful day. Good to see you, Corn. Justin Falzone's online. What's up, Justin? I like your avatar, my dude. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, we got Will Hall. That's a good name. Is Stranger Things where they got a character named Will? I think it's Stranger Things. I was thinking about that last night. I wanted to make a t-shirt, like, salute your shorts characters, but in the vein of, like, Stranger Things, where Zeke the Plumber or somebody would be like, like salute your shorts things or something. I don't know. I was talking to a graphics artist the other day and just trying to come up with some ideas for new t-shirts or something. Because, you know, we need to sell some things. What's up, brother? Justin. We got Brian Sanchez is online. What's up, Brian Sanchez? Hopefully today's not a dirty day for a dirty Sanchez. <laughs> Remember that joke, dirty Sanchez? I don't I still don't know what it is. But it's just kind of funny. IMTW. Wait, wait did... What does it stand for? I am the... Wa oh, the, is it The Walking Dead? They got the new show with Michonne that I've been watching. Michonne and Rick Grimes are back together. Britt, glad to catch you live. Oh, how you doing, Britt? You know all, the men's are going to come after you with a, an avatar in the picture. You know the men's are going to come after you. They're going to come after you, mama. You know, because you're beautiful. Thanks, man. I... What did he say? I studied chem, chem, I can't even read. I studied chem, chemistry at Rutgers. Well, ah, you're intelligent. Glad to have you. It's good to have somebody intelligent on hanging out with me today. Appreciate you. Brent Mania. What's up, dude? I just got finished watching a documentary or a vlog of Bailey from WrestleMania on the WWE YouTube channel. That was fun. I like Bailey. I like Bailey a lot. Um, I have a, ch what is it, like a cold chai latte tea that I made yesterday, and then I, I got it cold, so got a lot of little chai latte tea, and I know it has caffeine, which is bad for me, and my heart, but in moderation, in moderation, um, not to anybody cares, but I had a bunch of tests the other day. At the doctor's office, I had to do a stress test, urine, stool, um, blood work. And then this coming week, I got to do some x-rays and some MRIs. And... But I'm here. I'm here. Um, addicted to Ubiquity. I remember you. I love that name. Hey, Bauer. Oh, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. What do you guys want to talk about on today's show? I, 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 I'm going to try to do a couple of topics. I don't know if it's a show. I'm hopefully going to get the Happy Alien podcast back in the next couple weeks with this old all-in-one computer. Um, at least I can talk and go on StreamYard with this old computer um, until hopefully in the future I can fix everything. But I'm hopefully going to bring back the Happy Alien podcast and have a couple more guests and a couple of really good guests 
have made it known that, you know, they're going to be a part of the podcast show. Look forward to that. Plus, I'm getting out. I'm trying to start to go to some conventions, make some money, trying to fix my life. I got I got a bus pass. I've been traveling on the bus a little bit lately. So things are looking up. It's a brighter day. You know, for the people that stay at home all the time and they become a recluse and they get depressed, anxiety, like I have a lot of that. And it got worse during COVID after I had to move. Just want to let everybody know, keep fighting. It's okay. Don't let the darkness take you, control you completely because it's not a good place. Plus, on top of that, I'm a conspiracy theorist. And that's like an avenue of where you don't trust anybody. You don't believe anybody. You don't, you know, you think everybody's lying to you and everything is fake. So on top of being anxiety, depression, and whatever other issues I have, then I I go down the conspiracy world where I get even angrier and I get mad at everybody because I think I'm being lied to by whether it be governments or people or society or brainwashed. It's a lot of negativity. And that's why I've kind of been trying to deal with the spiritual um, because that's a more positive outlook. And I'll be honest with you guys, conspiracy leads, people won't agree with me, but the real true conspiracy theorist or whatever, they're not really crazy. I mean, some of them are, or some of them, they, they go too far, which I understand. But conspiracy can lead to spirituality because we don't want the negative and we, you know, we want to, we want to find the positive. So for a lot of conspiracy theorists or people that are truthers or people like me, we end up going down the spiritual, the spiritual rabbit hole and seeking spiritual guidance and energy and stuff like that. So being a conspiracy theorist, it's not that bad. I, I personally think people see the world a little bit better you know, for a more truthful nature with conspiracy theorists. But I can understand the ones that they don't want to see it. Like, remember The Matrix, where the guy, um, I forgot the character's name, but they were putting him back into The Matrix and they were feeding him steak and butter and potatoes. And they're like, he's like, okay, I'll go back into The Matrix, but I don't want to remember anything about the real world. (laughs) Ignorance is bliss. So awesome. All right, just my little two cents, guys. Sometimes I start to talk and I get off topic, but what's up, player? What's up, Jay Re- Jr. Sinal? Hey, Brent Mania, man, gifted somebody a membership. Who got it? That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Thank you, Brent, on behalf of everybody, brother. You're an awesome dude. What's up, Paco Marks? I'm probably not going to get everybody's comment on screen. Uh, it's when we, 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 what? Okay. Oh, Justin is talking about a dirty Sanchez. I think it's when you wipe under someone's nose. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Yep. Was on that one too. Sorry. I'm trying to catch up. I kind of forgot what I talked about. Citizen M. What's up, my dude? So I'm recognizing faces. Bailey's one of my favorites, Brent said. Hey, I care. I uh, hope everything works out. Best of luck, dude. What's up, F titties? <laughs> These names, guys. Um, yeah, I saw you gifted a membership, Brent. What are your thoughts on the Goonie sequel? Are they making a Goonie sequel? Are they? I'll be honest with you guys. When I was um, like, I think I was in like sixth grade around the time I was becoming an actor, like when I did my stage play, ooh, excuse me, in elementary, there was actually auditions for Goonies part two. There was actually auditions. And I went um, and they found me from that play that I did because I was starting to be an actor around that time. And I actually went in for like a meeting or something. And But they said it was for Goonies too. But I don't know. I didn't read any script or anything. They just talked to me. So, but man, it is one of my favorite movies. So, huh, I don't know about that. Oh, or the trend of movie sequels coming out this stage. You're completely correct, Will. It would be cool to meet you at a con at some point. I staffed conventions for years. I don't know how they work, Britt. Um, 
I mean, I got a couple of agents now that are helping me out. And I have the fears about my health and traveling and everything else. But I'm getting contracts. And I don't know if I'm requesting the right things. I literally don't know how we get paid. Is it at the end, at the beginning? You know, should I get something up front? I'm just going off of my agent's lead. But I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I really don't. Um, but I, I just have to do it. I just have to do it. And then hopefully more conventions, the more popular ones, will see that I'm finally going out and trying to do something that maybe they'll invite me. Because for many years, I got invited to some popular ones, but I didn't have an agent at the time. I didn't feel healthy. I, I didn't want to do anything. And so they, they, they kind of, I kind of became a flick. They're like, ah, don't even deal with him. He's, he's too weird to deal with or to handle. You know, he's all over the place. He doesn't know what he's doing. So I think they got that image of me, which is a truthful image, but um, I'm hoping to break that image. And I just need to go out and I need to live. I need to live. And I need to meet awesome people like you, Britt. Um, for the most part, conspiracies are true or for the most past. I mean, again, it's depending on where you whether you look at it. Everything's a conspiracy nowadays. And I think they're, they're milking it now. The mainstream is milking it. And they're actually creating conspiracies. That are not they're creating stuff that looks like conspiracies. Then everybody talks about it being a conspiracy online, on TikTok, wherever. And then all of a sudden they say, Oh no, it's not a conspiracy. You know, here's the proof. Then everybody that called it a conspiracy now looks stupider to the mainstream. Like the one with the the lady that had cancer, the the queen or the princess, or one of these. Again, they made that conspiracy last longer and longer and longer. Oh, is she real? Is she alive? Did she leave? Is she sick? Why won't she go in public? Oh, the manipulated photos the this of the queen, of that girl. And everybody's like, you yeah, look, look. And they let it go on. They let it go on. Right then, you know, two months later, oh, she has cancer. And now everybody, now everybody's apologizing. I apologize. I made a conspiracy video about the queen. I apologize. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I can't believe I disrespected a woman with cancer. I, where was that accent from? I have no clue. <laughs> but still, you know, they came out. And so now they called everybody that made conspiracy videos with what was honest to goodness, fake videos, fake photographs. You know, and they tried to make them all look stupid. Again, it's a psyop that they use conspiracies for. But, you know, some people understand what I'm saying. Some don't. <laughs> he gifted another membership. Wow. Dude, you're awesome, Brent. Uh, except Flat Earth, that's what? Slave talk. Well, you are at Rutgers. Um, so I can't say anything about about you. You're more intelligent than I am, but I'm going to be honest with you. I love the flat earth theory. I love it. I don't know if the earth is flat. It's not what I'm saying. I just don't believe everything that they've told us through their science and through NASA and whatever. I just, there's more to this earth that is being told to us. Whether it's round or flat, it is called a plane. But again, I love that stuff. It interests me. But I have no proof either way. But I lean toward the side of the pictures of the ball earth that they show us are manipulated. And I don't, my personal shelf, I don't know what this earth looks like from if there is a space or higher above, I don't know. Doesn't mean I think it's flat because that word can be misassociated and people think, oh, it's like this and you know it falls off the space or it's on the back of an, a turtle, you know, like in the images, I don't know. I just don't believe it's the way they tell us. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. I mean, I don't know. Until I get up there, if there is a space, I don't know. 
even the astronauts or these people that are going into space, they're not even going into space. They're going up to a certain height where they get that bouncy thing and, and that's it. I don't know. Just interesting. Really interesting stuff to me. Brent says he knows about anxiety and depression. Hollywood guy. That's a cool name, too. He's a Hollywood guy. What's up, Missing Persian? What? Missing Persian Mysteries. That's a cool name. It's a really cool name. Moosier. Moser. Moosier. That's a cool name. Uh-oh. It's another pretty girl pick. Another pretty girl to pick. Guys, find out what's going on. <laughs> Uh, I'm talking for the lonely people, the lonely people, lonely people. Oh, missing person. It's Steve. There you go. Hey, Steve. You guys, Steve is an awesome dude. I believe he has a podcast or something that I might do in the future. He supported me, bought some t-shirts for him and his, his wifey. And I, I appreciate the support, Steve. You're awesome, dude. Um, A and W Swatzel. It's hot in Arkansas. How was it? Sorry, my eyes. Are you having a ble a blessed day? It's hot in Arkansas. Um, yeah. You know what? Speaking of that, I mean, I don't. Maybe this is a theory, guys. But um, and I've I've remembered this in 2017 as well because I, I was getting into conspiracies and stuff, or I was into it really deeply back then more so than I am nowadays, but when they had the eclipse, like in 2017, and we just had the eclipse recently, I noticed in 2017, after the eclipse, even though it wasn't full in California or whatever, I noticed the next two days, for me personally, it felt like the sun was like hotter and had more energy than it ever had. It doesn't mean we were at 120 degrees in California. I'm just specifically talking about the energy from the sun, you know, that you could feel like it just had more of a brighter luminescence or a brighter heat or something like that after the eclipse in 2017. And then I didn't think of it at the time, but after this eclipse last week or whenever it was, the next day out here, I walked around the block and, and did some stuff. And I go, man, that sun is like, it just feels brighter than ever. Then I got reminded of 2017. And I go, is this a theory? Is the earth or whatever, if the sun is not nuclear fission or whatever, is it being recharged? You know, during an eclipse where whatever is recharging it or giving it energy, again, an eclipse does something where it, partially blocks it or it gets more energy whether i don't know i just like it just felt hotter to me on both occasions i don't know it's a theory it's a conspiracy i don't know but it was really really interesting then i started researching that and there's a lot of theories that there is like a recharging station behind the sun or around the sun like that it's not being charged by nuclear fission or whatever they say it is that it actually might be an external force that like recharges the sun or something like that. I mean, so I started researching it a little bit and it was really interesting to me. It's really, really interesting. Dave Durango, what's up my good dude? Happy to see your channel growing. Well, you know, I got a few more fans when I told my stories of that Nickelodeon event, um, which I made a video, I think a couple of days ago about it. Check it out. I explain everything there, but whew, that was a rough time for me. Um, Mike, can you go into your chats and change the speed of the chat? I'm not in a um, YouTube chat room. I think that's where you have to do it. I am in. Oh, Lolo donated. I'll, I'll get to that message. Um, so, no, I, I'm in StreamYard. I don't think I can change the chat speed. But, again... Don't you guys want your stuff to be answered? I mean, I'm going through it as best as I can. <clears throat> but again, it sounds 
is really stupid. If you want a super chat, it pops up in like a green little button like Lolo did just now. And I can see it and I can get to it a lot quicker. Um, broken bankruptcy. What is bigger? What? My eyes. What is bigger, Bauer Matrix or X Files? I think X Files. What is bigger, Bauer? I, I don't understand that question. Matrix or X Files? Um, I love the Matrix. It's my favorite movie. I was just talking about it last night. And I think I came to a consensus of my top three or four favorite movies. Um, I kind of want to make a video on it, so I don't know if I should reveal it now. Um, but if you want me to reveal my top four movies, let me know in a super chat. And then what people do for my money. I'll give my answers for money. But let me know. Because um, I do want to make a video one day soon. I've been writing down video talking ideas. Because I wanted to start making some more videos. And that was one of them. My top five favorite movies. Hello, Germany Rose. That's a beautiful name. People are so hyped for you at SplatCon. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's a little bit of controversy with that recently with an ex-employee. But I think they handled it on their end. And a lot of people think it's from Nickelodeon. Like Nickelodeon official. I, unless they're doing something from behind the scenes, I don't think they are, but, um, it's been a scary time for that. What's up crumb. Oh, I could give you all the information you need about being a guest. I ran two different guest relation departments. Ha ha. Well, Britt, do me a favor. Hit me up on social medias or it or email. I think my information for them are down below and maybe we can talk and, and, um, we could become friends and you can answer some of my fears about conventions and stuff. I, <clears throat> I would truly appreciate that, Britt. Lolo. Hey, Mikey, I believe conspiracy theory should be in balance. Working in, a, working in disability, I have a learned that too much conspiracy theory deep dive can really hurt critical thought. Life is about balance. I can respect what you're saying, Lolo. Um, but in my opinion, sometimes critical thought leads to conspiracy theories. Because if you take away all the narratives that they tell you and that you're hearing from, you know, the news or the this or the that, then you go back to your basic gut feeling and your critical thinking, your basic critical gut thinking. Then conspiracies come to you. You're like, that's faked or that doesn't seem real or that doesn't seem legit. Oh, but the science tells you it's real. And then you're like, hmm. Scientists said that. And, you know, studies, people get brainwashed. It's a whole subject. But Lolo, thank you for the support, man. I truly appreciate it. Real quick, let, let me see how far I am behind on the chat. Um, wow, I may be pretty far. Huh? Yeah, I'm pretty far. Whew. We got a lot of people today. I think we got 30 people. I think the most I had at one time was like 50 something, but that's pretty awesome. Appreciate you guys. Um, see if I can just go through. NASA is bogus. Earth is a spheroid. Uh, born mush. What's up, brother? What do you think of, of Iran hitting Israel with don'ts? Honestly, I don't know too much about that, man. Because, uh, again, I, I don't want to study war. You know, that's not – I don't know if it's a real conspiracy to me, and it just doesn't interest me. I feel for everybody. I don't have any feedback on the topic. I believe people are evil and evil things are happening. You know, um, I'm just telling you, we're, we may talk about civil war in a little bit in America because that movie came out and I'm really interested in seeing it. But um, war is happening all over. Um, I honestly think we're in World War Three right now. And I do believe America is heading toward a civil war in probably the next 20, 25, 30 years. And Nash, never a straight answer. Love it. Uh, sorry, guys, if I missed some of your stuff, please forgive me. I do want to catch up a little bit. And I hate to say it, but Super Chat's always help and whatever. But thank you, guys. Ask the question two or three times. You know, if I don't see it, maybe I'll see it. Uh, Got to go, Mikey. Oh, 
Oh, Lolo, thank you so much. Um, what did you say? Uh, uh oh, my internet went out or something. Uh oh. Gotta go, Mikey. Gotta uni work to do echo. <laughs> uh, appreciate you, dude. Appreciate you. Mosier, isn't the moon just a prop? It might be. You know, some people, or there's some theories that it's plasma. Some people believe it's like a, like a iron type of surface, but it's transparent. It's lucid. You can literally see stars or whatever they call stars behind, or through the moon on certain nights. It's, it's really intense. And the moon actually creates its own light, light source. They say it doesn't. They say it's the light source off of the, off of the sun, but it creates its own light source. And it's, it's a cooling light source, not a hot light source. Again, some of the things they tell us through science is just not, in my opinion, it's just doesn't, it doesn't hold weight. I'm back. Sorry to disappoint y'all. <laughs> Sunrise and sunsets, the clouds are illuminated from below. I don't know what that was answering to. But thank you, Justin, for the feedback. You think at 8 p.m. in New Jersey, the sun drops altitude? Uh, yeah. I can't get into an intelligent debate. I don't have any facts in front of me right now, Justin, if you're going with me. And, um, again, I'm not saying that I'm that intelligent or I know everything. And I'm not saying all of science or whatever technology is wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's certain things that, in my opinion, with critical thinking, not scientific thinking, there's not a good answer. You know, science is not fact. Science is a never-ending study that things change. But they treat science as fact nowadays. They treat it as fact. They tell you, oh, this is how, you know, the jab works or, or this is how the moon works. And, you know, we have, you know, spaceships and we've studied it for hundreds of years and this is how it is. It's fact. Well, maybe the earth changes. Maybe things disappear and reappear. And things that were never studied 50 years ago happen. Science is actually never a, a fact. It shouldn't be presented as one. Because in my opinion, science, that's why they always add the word fiction after it. But science is, in my opinion, a never-ending study of everything. So when they... Con they put themselves concrete on one answer. That's when the studying ends. You can't do that. You got to study forever. Things change. Science will change. That's just my opinion. Uh, what is the role you had to get all the tattoos of the same person? Oh, uh, that was from... The Millers. It was a, a CBS TV show um, that was produced by the same guy that made Raising Hope. I'm pretty good, pretty decent friends with him. Um, yeah, it was called The Millers. It only lasted one season, but it, it was cool. It had Will Arnett, the guy from Curb Your Enthusiasm, that goes, Larry, hey, Larry. I love that dude. I forget his name. He's, oh, JB, JB Schmoove. I love him. Waver, what's up, brother? Hey, sorry about the other day or whatever in the podcast, but you brought up a name that I didn't want to talk about. So I think I timed you out or muted you or something like that. I'm not quite sure. But I know you're a good person. I just, I don't want to hear that, those names. I don't want to deal with that stuff. $1,000 super chat. That... Has anybody ever gotten that? Have you guys ever seen that from any popular YouTuber, anybody? That'd be insane. I'll be honest with you. I had a $100 super chat on my Raiders channel a couple of times. Um, and then I've also got donated like $150 one time and like a couple of 100s from people that are just so amazing and awesome. But have you? Have you guys ever seen that? Hey, Sean and Ezra, happy to see you're live. Happy to see you online. Um, hello, Mike from England. What's up, Zen? 
<laughs> Dude, I love it. The Apple Eclipse. That is awesome. Uh, hello, Mike from England, and let's hear your British accent. Was that what I was trying to do earlier? Oh, top of the no top. Is that Irish? Top of the morning to you. I'm going to be called racist now for doing accents. It's comedy. Top of the morning to you. Oh, magic charms, lucky charms. <laughs> I used to do that all the time when I was a little kid. Oh, lucky charms. They're magically delicious. Oh, Marty McFly. I'm part of the McFly family. <laughs> As an actor, some, you, you need to study accents. And sometimes we get like Texas accents, South accents to do an audition for a TV project. I'm not saying I'm good at any of them. And I haven't studied them for years, but I wish I would get better because I could, could have probably been on Saturday Night Live if I could learn accents and be a much better character actor of doing characters or impressions. That would be pretty awesome. Um, I would, Jason, what'd you say? I would say Goonies. What is your favorite scene in the film? Man, I love the whole movie. Oh, I was wondering why you kept talking. Everybody's talking about Goonies today. I forgot. That's my poster. <laughs> That's my poster. Uh, God, all of them. All of them. But, like, I got to, like, ye intruders. No, 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 no. Where Corey Feldman or Mouth is doing the Spanish accent. Los dragas. <laughs> you know, like, put los dragas por manipulaza. It's, it's torture or whatever. <laughs> because <laughs> I grew up with a lot of, you know, like Latin or Spanish or Mexican or whatever people. And, you know, there was a lot of mothers that acted just like her. And that makes me laugh every time, you know, <laughs> it just makes, dude, I love the whole movie. And then uh, there was a time at Bible camp, I was puking and uh, I, I threw up on the kids. Oh, I love it. I love it all. What's up, Alfred? How you been? What's up, Alfred Balderas? He was great with the corn waver. I don't know what that means. Please hit that like. Oh, thank you very much, waver. <clears throat> Maybe waver is corn difference. Who knows? Hey, we got a new member, Crumb. Yay, Crumb. Welcome to the club. That's right. But there's one thing about the Hay Bauer Membership Club. We don't talk about the Hay Bauer Membership Club. Because a lot of things go on in the members only chat. <laughs> not, not really. I need to do more. I need to do more for you members. I really, really do. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, hey, Mandy. Mandy's online. Oh, I love, th I love this girl or this woman. Mandy is so awesome. She's um, been supporting me on Facebook, and she's an amazing soul. And I just wanted everybody to meet Mandy, Mandy McGee. She's saying hello. I appreciate you, Mandy. Hey, maybe you'll want to be on the Happy Alien podcast one day. We could just talk anything. It doesn't have to be about conspiracies, aliens. I like to meet people. That's what I want the Happy Alien podcast to be, is you never know what you're going to get or what we're going to talk about. You know, I don't always want it to be aliens or, or whatever, but I like that name. So maybe you'll want to be on it in the future. Crumb said Civil War looks cool. Yeah, let's talk about that in a minute or so. Justin, about the moon and the, the cool light source. That's a crocker. Okay. He's being harsh at me. He He's, he's getting defensive. <laughs> it may be hollow. That That's a great theory too, man. The hollow theory. I love that one, dude. And I can't deny it may be an alien spaceship. Um, yeah, man, I love, dude, I love it all, Justin. Again, I'm not trying to prove my, I'm right or wrong with anything. I'm not trying to get people angrily if they have a differing opinion. I love all of it. I don't, I don't have the answers, man. But I got a ton of questions, <laughs> you know? Like, I got a ton of questions, man. <laughs> and I just feel like they stopped studying, you know? I just feel like... They gave an answer and people stopped studying, you know, like you just stopped. There's going to be no more creation if we stop studying. It's like Star Trek. If we stop exploring and studying, you know, but then corporations took it over. You know, nobody can really go into space without, you know, like having a NASA or whatever or paying a million dollars or whatever. Just, 
space is incorporated now or the moon will be every tv show or movie is now about space and moon landings they're testing out the cgi capabilities because they're supposedly going to be moon landings in the next couple years or we're going back to the moon so in my opinion they're testing out the graphics because they're going to fake another moon landing but this time they're going to try to do it correctly <laughs> So they're doing all these TV shows with sets and locations. They're learning how to film, the CGA, the AI, everything. That's in my opinion. Um, but we are always learning things, says Max. Science is a theory until an outcome is provable. Yeah, that's, that's again, gravity is a theory. No, no, gravity exists. Do we really know? <laughs> what is gravity? Can't be explained. How does it work? <laughs> we need to keep studying. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm trying to catch up. Waver, I understand completely. Oh, we got Fluffy's online. What's up, Fluffy? Hey, Steven. I'm still in SoCal. I'll be heading toward Texas in a week. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, on your way to Texas, Fluffy, do you go by um, LA or my area? If you do, man, I need to see you, brother. I need to hang out with you, brother. And Flat Cat Jessica. What's up, girl? Oh, Super Sticker. I don't know. What do Super Stickers do? Like, is it an actual sticker that YouTube sends you? I doubt it. But what is, I mean, I understand it's like a super chat, but is there a sticker that I could post or something? Does the memberships have stickers now? <laughs> Honestly, I'm stupid. What's a super sticker? But thank you for the super sticker. Give me a night wet licorice kiss. That's from the Goonies. Give me a night wet licorice kiss. <laughs> Daisy Jones and the Six. You guys check that show out. Check out IMDb for that one. There might be an interesting actor in that one. Um, Moozer. Okay, yeah, well. Sorry. And your shirt. Hi, and your shirt. Ugh. My favorite line. Oh, here we go. From Goonies. My favorite line is, Mikey, drug dealers wouldn't be caught dead in those polyester rags. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They went. That was from Short, short Round. Um, data. 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 Mikey, in those polyester rags. Was that data? In the golly, polyester rags. Hmm. I was thinking that was data. God, there's a conversation going on that I have no clue about. Forgive me trying to figure it, figure it all out. But I wanted to talk about a couple of movies or whatever in a second. Hey, Steven's online. Fluffy Gamer, my bad. I thought you left and were there. Um, you ever hang out with Elijah Wood? Yeah, I mean, um, I met Elijah Wood. Uh, my first time was at a computer store called Egghead. We had a computer store in our neighborhood. I think it was off of like, what it was it? It was either Burbank Boulevard or Magnolia Boulevard. But, um, I went to the computer store all the time because I had like a 486 computer that I built myself like in the early 90s um, through Fry's Electronics, one of my favorite stores. And so I went to Egghead and I was looking for games, you know, that would because you had to look at what if they would work with your computer and your, you know, works on an IBM clone 486S or, you know, it needs 256 kilobytes of RAM. And it would always come with like five or six or eight disc. But I was looking for a video game one day. And I think that was the day I bought Wayne's World, the PC game. But I was standing there. And then all of a sudden, I think I was holding. It might have been Wayne's World or another game. And then I was holding the game. And then I heard, oh, have, you know, have you played it? Or is that why you're going to buy it or something like that? And then I look. And it was Elijah Wood. And I recognized him from, I think, it, like, 
the movies he did around that time. I think he did Flipper around that time or or whatever else. Um, uh, well, and then I think I auditioned for that movie, the Wagon movie, Red Wagon, Red Red something. I don't know, but whatever. I knew who he was, and I go, oh shit! I was like, hey. I was like, hey, you're Elijah Wood. He's like, oh yeah, I recognize you too. <laughs> he actually told me he's like, I recognize you too. I'm like, oh wow, really? It's probably 91, man, 92. Um. <clears throat> So it's cool, man. I met him and we talked computer games and we kind of walked around the store. His dad was waiting for him. We walked around the store looking at games and, oh, this one looks cool. You know, what kind of computer did you build or, or do you have? And, you know, then he told me he just got back from, I think, Miami or Florida because he filmed Flipper right around that time. And, yeah. But that was my only meeting with him in my life that I can remember. I don't think I've ever seen him another time. But yeah, that's my Elijah Wood story. Pretty awesome. And he did inspire me because when he got the part in Lord of the Rings, um, I there was a rumor or something that he filmed his audition. Like he took a f camera crew and filmed his audition. And that inspired me to do the same thing for Evolution because they were having some turmoil, whether to hire me or, or something like that. So I went out and I took a page out of Elijah Wood's book and I filmed like some scenes and auditions for evolution. And then I, I'm not saying that gave me the part cause I did like five auditions as well, but it helped me get the part. Uh, slug. We talked about the flat earth theory a, a little while ago. Um, like I said, I don't believe earth is round or is specifically like they tell us. Again, I don't know the shape of the earth, how it really is. I just don't believe what they tell us. Too bad Kubrick isn't alive to tell us. Um, Free Willy wasn't him. That was Jason James Richter. Oh, yeah, I remember Free Willy. I met Jason James one time. I think I saw him at an audition or something. I was like, hey, that's the Willy kid. <laughs> he passed away, didn't he? Guy, rest in peace. Radio Flyer. Yeah, that's the name of it, Crumb. Nate G, I would be obsessed with Free Willy when I was younger. That's a great movie, though, man. As kids, we all we, we all wanted to free Willy. <laughs> then when you got older, everybody literally freed Willy. If you're a man. That's a bad joke. Hey guys, let me see if I can get this graphics up on screen and we could talk some movies. Because I was debating whether to take a bus ride, depending on how I feel. Because as the, the day goes along, sometimes I feel worse and worse and I have to lie down. Um, but I'm feeling really good right now. And I didn't know if I should like take a bus and try to go see the Civil War movie. But let's see if I can not mess up our screen or our technology. And we can look at some movies that are in theaters. And you guys let me know your thoughts on you know, what I should watch or what I've already watched. I kind of see, I'm trying to see if my screen gets with this graphics in this computer, I'm trying to see if my internet gets really, really bad. I think it did just did gets really choppy because ugh, some of the weakest computers I got going even weaker than the other one before. But um, Civil War, man, I really want to watch Civil War. I'm really interested in that one. And um, people are calling it an anti-Trump movie uh, because, you know, they have different factions across the states. And it really interests me. Like, could we literally be in a civil war? Could California team up with Texas? <laughs> you know, and then they create different factions, the Northeast, you know, uh, the Middle South or whatever, the map of the civil war. I'm just really interested. Have any of you seen it? What are your thoughts? Um, is it a propaganda tool? Is it a conspiracy type movie tool? Um, is it believable? But I met Kristen Dunch a couple of years back at a party. Um, so I was just really interested in um, watching the Civil War movie. It interests me. It interests me a lot. I'll call you later, Mike. I'm still in SoCal. Oh, in SoCal. 
that doesn't mean San Diego, Fluffy. Oh, Soul Cow. So you're here. Shit. Let's go watch Civil War together, brother. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, Justin, I'm sure it's a propaganda vehicle. Sorry, I'm trying to read. If you know that, you're le less successible to it. Everything's propaganda, man. Everything. Even some of the stuff I say could be considered propaganda, you know, which is kind of a scary thought, you know. Um, Nick B said, I doubt Texas would team up with California. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a, it's an interesting theory. So I'm looking forward to see on how they did it or why they did it. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm sure they made the middle of America. You know, they probably made that like MAGA country. And then they, you know, they have Jesse Plemons in that one scene where he's like, they're like, we're Americans. And then he's like, okay. What kind of American? Oh, I love it. I love Jesse. Oh, I could only dream of getting auditions in roles like that where I'm taken seriously. Oh, I, I believe I, I'm a good enough actor to take on some of these roles. But man, that scene, woo, what kind of American? Ooh, awesome. Awesome. But I'm looking forward to it. And apparently that's an A24 movie. I've had people ask me questions. Oh, what's your favorite A24 movie? I was like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Apparently that's a production company that has a lot of hits and a lot of good movies. So I'm sure I've watched plenty of them. I just didn't know at the time that they were A24 movies. I didn't know that was a category. So it's really interesting to me. Oh, he, he plays a sociopath in, in, in the movie? Not just like a MAGA person? Slug said, in 2020, during the BLM protest, there was a small civil war. I could agree with that, with the way everything happened. And, you know, um, that one guy that shot the other guy that was running after him and chasing him. And I remember, yeah, you're right. I could see that. Um, Michael G said, I saw they made the president like Trump. Ugh, I'm getting spoiler alerts, but I'll read through. Um, they made the president like tr Trump. Uh, Trump with his bragging at the beginning, the best blah, blah, blah ever. But they didn't portray him. They didn't portray any side as heroic. The ones that took out. Oh, you told me they took out the president. Damn it, Michael. Come on, Michael G. Come on, Michael G. Ah, Michael T, Michael T. Ah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Rittenhouse was his name. Um, Tom, what's up, Tom? My wife and love you, man. Hope you're doing well. Oh, that's awesome. Let's become a, th let's be a thruple. Let's Is that Troy? I know Troy. I know a Troy Clark. He's an awesome supporter. Is that you, Troy? Or is it literally Tom? I do know a Troy Clark. Uh, Michael G. saying sorry, Bauer. It's okay, brother. I mean, it's like telling people in Oppenheimer, guess what? They explode a bomb in Oppenheimer. <laughs> spoiler alert! <laughs> there are some people that literally would, would have called that a spoiler alert, dude. <laughs> uh... Mosier's like, spoiler alert, with, with with no warning. Yeah, I feel the same way. Um, and then is Godzilla out yet? Uh, it's probably a couple, another couple weeks. I'm looking forward to that one. I'll be honest with you. I think I've missed two or three Godzilla movies, and I still haven't watched Skull Island. That movie, I worked with the director. He was like a 26-year-old like, I called him a kid. I worked with the director of Skull Island like a year before he did Skull Island on a, what was it, a, a prime television series called, it had the weirdest name, it was called Cocked. It was the guy from um, Jane Silent Bob, Jason, Jason something, the actor from Kevin Smith movies. 
it was a a, a, a pilot called cocked where I was like a, a gun um, assistant. And if it went to series on prime, we were in competition with the man in the high castle. I think that was the name of the show. The man in the tower of the high castle about Nazis taking over America. So they had a competition on prime on that channel. Cause they were all starting to create their own content. So I was in a pilot that I was going to be in the show. If it went to series, I was like a gun assistant at a gun factory and it was called cocked. And it was a pretty cool comedic gun show. They had boobies, women, guns. It's pretty interesting. But I did that movie with the guy Jason from, um, yeah, from Red Bank. That's the actor's name. He was the one that I think had the theater, the comic book store and the Kevin Smith movies. Why can't I think of the names? He's a cool guy. I really liked him. But I was his assistant. In, in in that series. I only had two two or three lines in the first pilot, but it didn't get picked up. It never went to series. But the director of that pilot was, I forgot his name again, but he directed Skull Island. He was about ready to go location scouting, you know, a couple of weeks after he did the pilot for Skull Island. He was the director of Skull Island. He also was slated to be the director of Metal Gear Solid. So we were talking video games. He was a fan of mine. He helped hire me for that series. And he was a fan of mine. He was a cool dude, man. He he was talking about Metal Gear Solid, how they're putting that into production. He's about to go film Skull Island. And I was like, man, like some amazing people like me or whatever. But then he got into some turmoil. He got arrested or got into a fight while filming Skull Island or something like that. And... Then he ended up filming Skull Island. He got injured, like he broke his leg or something. And he's done other projects since, but not that many. And the Metal Gear Solid movie, I don't know if it's going forward, but um, maybe I should hit him up and, and see how he's doing. But yeah, that's my story. So I still want to watch Skull Island. Um, <clears throat> Jason Muse, that's his name waiver. Love you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jason was cool, dude. I was a fan of him when I got that job. We, we rode in a, in a car together to go to the shed. And he's like, hey, how you been? I was like, what do you mean, how I've been? I've never met you. <laughs> but it was a cool thing to say. Uh, I've met Kevin Smith on multiple occasions. And me and Kevin are decently cool whenever. Whatever. It was just, I like Jason Muse, man. I like that dude. No, not Jason Muse. That's Kevin Smith's partner. No, that's Kevin Smith's partner. No, the actor, I think he played Banky. Banky on Mall Rats or it's not Jason Muse, guys. I'm so sorry, man. Not Jason Muse. It's not Jason Muse, guys. Whatever. Abigail, what the hell movie is that about? Oh, that's about the vampire dancer. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Unintelligently warfare. What? Unintelligently manly. I don't know what that movie is, man. The Ministry of Un. Gentlemanly warfare. Don't care. Jason Lee. Thank you, Waver. Jason Lee. I'm pretty <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, Kung Fu Panda. That's right. I want to watch Kung Fu Panda. Dude, I love the Kung Fu Panda movies, man. But I I've seen everyone with my best friend Raphael, but he lives in Tennessee. I've seen everyone with him, except this one came out. So that's why I haven't watched it yet. I just feel like I want to watch it with him. And then Ghostbusters. Sorry about the internet guys and girls and thems and theys. I don't know. I still haven't watched Ghostbusters, but I do I do love Jason. I do love Jason Reitman. I saw the original Ghostbusters film about a year before it even came out in theaters with Jason Reitman. Because um, I've known him well or decently for many years. Um, and then, you know, when his father passed away, I communicated with him a little bit. And then around that time, he had the Ghostbusters movie done. Uh, but COVID hit and all that other stuff. So he delayed the release of Ghostbusters, the first one. <clears throat> and then um, he asked uh, a group of people to watch it digitally. 
and signed like an NDA and all this other stuff. And we watched it digitally and we gave him our feedback. And then um, he wanted to, he took an extra year before he released it because apparently he wanted to make it right or make it as good as he can before he releases it. You know, he didn't want to just rush it out there. Plus, I think COVID around right around that time was happening and he didn't want to lose income from theaters. And they were talking about whether it should be a VOD or this or that, whatever was going on. But he sent me a, like a digital copy of the first Ghostbusters, like, I don't know, probably 10 months, 11 months before it actually came out in theaters, maybe nine or 10 months. So I got to watch it and give him my feedback. But I haven't had a chance to 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 watch Frozen Empire. Um, but yeah, man, I love Jason. Jason's fucking awesome. Jason Reitman is the bomb. I'm so sad about his father passing away. It's funny because Ivan Reitman's partner, you know, that we filmed Evolution with, passed away about a year prior. Um, his partner with Montecito Picture Company. And they were partners for life, man. That was a tough time for, for all of them. Um, Brett Mania, I saw Kung Fu 4 and I enjoyed it. Okay, good. I'm looking forward to it. I might have to actually watch it without my friend. But... NDAs are illegal now in New York. Is that true? You said hashtag joke. I don't know. <laughs> Michael Ray Bauer, it's the bar. Mm, love you. Man, I've been online an hour. And normally, I start getting sick. I'm feeling decent today. Oh, I'm feeling decent today. I had a vitamin bag last week or on Thursday when I was at the, the hospital or whatever all day. They gave me like a vitamin bag. It was nuts, man. That was a scary day. Stripes. Oh, I love Stripes. Dude, I was the biggest Ivan Reitman fan when I got the job. And that, I have some stories about evolution where everything kind of went to shit. But I was so proud to be working with Ivan Reitman. You guys don't know. They called me a kish ash. You know, they and somebody told me, act like you belong. You know, because every morning we were on set, I was like, I'm ready. You know, and then other actors are coming in late. We're waiting on other people. You know, th there's a lot of stories like that. But every day I was like, you know, like Ivan Reitman is speaking like. And then at every turn, I thanked him. You know, I, I thanked him for letting me be a part of it. And then I don't know, I guess it rubbed people the wrong way. And they're like, act like you belong. You know, stop kissing ash because I sent him an award. While he got an award while we were filming Evolution, he got like 10 or a million VHSs sold in his career. So he went back to L.A., got an award. And then I, with the help of some people or his assistant, gave him an award, you know, to give to him at the award ceremony. It just, I just wanted everybody to know that I, lo I loved Ivan Reitman and I was so proud to be on that set. But everybody else, you know, they're just like, ah, whatever. That's, it's, it's Ivan Reitman. Who cares? Let's move on. Let's have a joke. Let's show up late. You know, let's go out drinking the night before we got a big sheen. That's not me. It's not me. Because I, I know in these moments, I may not have these moments again, which I still might not ever have them. So I try to live those moments as best as possible. But in my career, everything goes to shit. I'm not understood. I'm misjudged. Um, and things I do out of love and out of my heart, they somehow become evil or they become bad to people. And I'm just really misunderstood. But that's how, how it is. Um, the first omen, don't care. Monkey Man looks interesting. That's what Dev, right? Dev Patel, that looked interesting. What other movies do we got? Oh, we got another Nicolas Cage movie, Arcadian. Oh, what the hell is that? Is that a spider movie called Sting? Yeah. It's a horror movie. Oh, remember Arachnophobia? My friend was in that. Some guy. I, I don't know why I call him my friends. I mean, I've 
met them and I consider them a friend, but I haven't talked to them in many years. But Garrett Ratliff, he was also in the Mighty Ducks with his brother Eldon. His brother's name is Eldon Henshin, and then his he took on Garrett Ratliff, but they're brothers. Eldon Henshin in Mighty Ducks. Uh, Garrett Ratliff was one of the kids in Arachnophobia, and we went to the the a screening of that Arachnophobia with I went with Eldon, his mom Sadie, and Garrett, and then the, their brother Eric. Uh, we watched Arachnophobia. I think I'm scared of spiders. <laughs> like, deathly afraid of spiders, man. Arachnophobia was awesome. Long Legs looks good with Nick Cage. Oh, Dune 2. I haven't watched it yet, man. I haven't watched it. You know what? That's one that I need to get out for. Man, I should literally, like, leave right now. And go watch a triple header. <laughs> I should watch Dune, Civil War, and Ghostbusters. That's what I need to do. One of you guys want to pick me up? That would take away about an, an hour of travel if I got picked up. You guys want to pick me up? We can go watch a triple header. I'll buy a slice of pizza or two. Oh, we are about to die. Salute you. I love how down to earth this live is. It's not like some of the other celebrity chats where one has to subscribe or become a member. Well, I mean, I ask everybody to do that. So I see your comments or whatever, but I'm doing my best because I do respect each and every one of you. I really do. I mean, let's be honest, man. There's been many times where I wouldn't even have sometimes a few dollars to my name to pay bills or whatever, if it wasn't for the support of everybody. And I can't just make it for members only, you know, even though I kind of want to, and I do put things behind a paywall, but I appreciate what you're saying. I appreciate that. Again, I wish I was president. I consider myself a man of the people. I love it. Everybody tell they're unlovable, but I wouldn't know how to fix everything. But I would definitely lead the country with my heart and my love and my respect. And I think that's better than half of the evil that's in the world. Um, Arachnophobia was sick. Yeah, I love Arachnophobia. That's a great movie. Um, I wanted a spider in my football helmet because, <laughs> because of Arachnophobia. That's right. The kid played football or somebody, the, the spider was in the helmet. Oh, uh, you brought it. Ugh. Scary as shit, dude. <laughs> I'm sure I got couch bugs or bed bugs. Cause I get little every once in a while I got I get little red marks. Not a lot, but like every once in a while I get little red marks. Like on my body. Cause I sleep without my shirt. But I don't know if, is that a spider? Is that a bed bug? There is the occasional cockroach that sheeps in here, and boy, I try to kill it as soon as possible. Um, but I grew up with cockroaches, unfortunately, too much way back in the days. That's why I'm so grateful. I don't really have a uh, infestation anymore. I did live with that. These apartments many years ago, my, my goodness. But yeah, it is what it is. Yay. Thanks, Brett. Oh, Brett gave another gift. Dude, you're awesome, Brett. I got to have you on a live stream, Brent. We got to talk, man. Well, now that it looks like I can at least talk and look at some websites on this old computer that I've put together from, from the past, it's an all-in-one. It's like, it's a Sony Vio. Yeah, Sony Vio. Uh, it's a 2010 all-in-one, whatever, with an Intel Core. I think it's an i5. Um, so it's at least working decently. But the other computer that broke down that I built uh, like in 2012 or 13, like three years after this one, um, I spent like $3,000 on that one. And I bought everything up to date, you know, the highest i5 at the time and the highest graphics card at the time. But, you know, and it had like eight hard drives. Um, yeah, but nowadays they got the solid state drives. They got the better graphics card. They, what do they got? The i12 processors or I don't really know. 
So, the, but I messed up the BIOS, man. I messed up the BIOS. Can't get it going again. So I had to pull out these older things. Thank, thank goodness I kept them. And I pulled them out. And now we at least got a live stream, guys. We at least got a live stream where we're hanging out and talking. Eight-Legged Freaks. I remember that movie, too. That was like a B-movie, like a 1950s B-movie poster where they had the big spiders or whatever in the background. And they had people like, oh, and they had the spiders in the background. I remember that movie. Hey, Waver, you bought a sticker. <laughs> what kind of a sticker? Is it a sticker? I still don't know the answer. All right. Arthur and the King looks good. Um, I like that movie. That's about a runner and a dog that follows him. I kind of like those movies when I want to cry and fall in love with animals. I like that. Immaculate. Oh, is that about? The, oh, that's what the girl that hosted Saturday Night Live and Euphoria. Um, what is that movie about? Does she, is she a sinner? Does she kill somebody? Does she get married? I don't know. Are they sexualizing a nun? I don't know. Bad mind, don't care. Never heard of it. This maiden. Oh, Late Night with the Devil looks interesting. That's about a talk show host, right? Oh, what was the Deep Sky? What one was that one? How can I go back? How can I go back? How can I go back? What is Deep Sky about? Oh, is that all the propaganda from the supposedly video footage from the iHubble telescope in space where they found a new a new star? I'm sorry. I'm being funny. Imaginary, another teddy bear movie. Don't Don't really know anything about it. Um, hopeful Spider-Man. These are in theaters. Yeah, I think we're done with that. All right, let's quickly look at the home box office. Let's see what movies won the box office according to box office mojo, guys. What's up, Shalski? What's up, Steven Lapierre? Hey, Gary Busey's online. Give me some boosie bo boosieisms. You know, like IMDB. Intellectually manipulated, dumb bitches. <laughs> That's a Gary Buseyism. <laughs> IMDb, intellectually manipulated, dumb bitches. <laughs> Civil War. Okay, so apparently Civil War, did it come out on Friday or Wednesday? I'm not quite sure. But um, $10 million for a Friday. Today's Saturday. So today's Saturday. So you got to figure Civil War will at least do the Friday numbers. So we'll see how much it's made completely. Godzilla. Oh, Godzilla is out. Oh, it is out. Shoot. Frozen Empire. Ghostbusters a million on Friday. Monkey Man. Recent release date changes. Okay. Oh, they're coming out with a Shaw 11. I think I stopped at Shaw 3. Oh, my goodness. Dune Part 2. 200. 69 million so far. Oh, you guys might not be able to see it because it's not, not very screen friendly, is it? Let me see if I can make it screen friendly. I'm trying, guys. Yeah, I don't think I can. I think I pressed something and I messed it up. Forgive me. Oh, yeah, I want to watch the Bob Marley movie. One love, one heart. I want to see how the actor does. Let's get together and feel all right. One love. Monkey Man's out, okay. Ten million last weekend, first omen. Let's see if I can see the official, how much it's made officially. Um, let me look at Dune Part 2. Let's see how much Dune Part 2 is made officially. Up to date. Okay, the opening weekend it got eighty-two million. Um, it's been in release forty-three days. Oh my god, it's been in release that long, and I still technically haven't watched it. I mean, I, I tried to watch a an illegal version. I, I just couldn't finish it. I need better quality. Um. Where's the total? Where's the total? Oh, here it is. Domestic, 268. International, 400. Worldwide, 669. Will it reach a billion dollars? No. 
Um, domestically, it'll it'll reach at least 275, maybe 425. So it'll probably leave theaters, in my opinion, at 750 million. And then, of course, whether it be DVD or release, it'll make another 250 million. So it'll make a billion dollars with DVD and Blu-ray. That's just my opinion. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I'm excited for the Michael Jackson movie in April. Yeah, they filmed it. When I change the screen, you guys see what happens. You're just, just changing a screen. Um, but they filmed a part of it at a, a local area out here in Burbank. They made, turned the an old Kmart into a Toys R Us to film part of the Michael Jackson movie. So that was crazy. They filmed part of that out here. Is Bar Bob Marley actor one of his sons like Ice Cube? You know what? Good point. I don't know. I need to look into that, Tom. Uh, Brent Mania said, I heard, I heard StreamYard makes your CPU run too high. I don't know for sure if it was something I was reading. I think everything runs, whatever PC I have run too high. Because <laughs> I don't have that good of a PC. Let's quickly look at Godzilla. I want to see how much it's made completely. Sorry, guys. This stuff interests me. Um, Godzilla has made 373 worldwide in only 15 days release. Dude, that's like possibly more than Dune Part 2 made in its first 15 days or like half of its total. That's intense. So worldwide, Godzilla will end up with 500 million, in my opinion. Yeah, please hit the like, the subscribe, consider donating, consider getting a membership. Appreciate you guys. Um, in my opinion, Godzilla will finish worldwide probably 500 million, if not more. It may do. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. Let's check out Ghostbusters. Let me give a guess for worldwide for Ghostbusters. You know what? Probably 200 million. It might have just passed the 200 million mark total. Oh, even less. Oh, that sucks for Jason. Hasn't reached 100 million domestically. Internationally, hasn't reached 50. So it's at 141. So it'll definitely, it's been out 22 days. It'll definitely make 150. Worldwide, I was hoping it would be at 200. Um, I don't know what the budget is. They used to tell you the budget of the projects on, on what is this? Um, Box Office Mojo. IMDb owns it, right? Uh, IMDb, yeah, it owns it now. Interesting villain, Godzilla. That's what I want to see. I still want to see. I still got to watch Godzilla minus one. When does that come on DVD or VOD? Oh, I got to watch Godzilla minus one. Let's look up Kung Fu Panda four. Let's do it. Probably 150 million already. Oh my gosh. I was way wrong. Ooh, that's huge. Kung Fu Panda is huge, y'all. 36 days. That's three sixes. Uh oh, Satan. Um, gross 170 million pretty much domestically, 251 internationally for worldwide 421 in 36 days. It'll definitely make 500 million worldwide. And then you're probably looking at, at the end of it, another three to 500 million with DVDs and whatever. So this is going to be a billion dollar movie. I'm sure the budget was probably 200 million, though. Let's be honest. Definitely, definitely. What are wrenches next to people's names and stars mean? I be you believe the stars mean they are members? Oh, wrenches? Yeah, what is a wrench? Because Brent has a wrench. 
Like maybe he's a tool for my channel. Oh, he's a moderator. Maybe because he's a moderator. Yeah. Hey, Sleuthette. <laughs> That's a great name. <laughs> That's a great name, Sleuthette. I love it. Hey, Michael. Happy Saturday. I appreciate you. I really do. Wrench is a mod, said Nate G. Yeah, you're right. Wrench is a moderator. Stars means members and wrenches means you're a moderator. Oh, okay. I need to get some more moderators in the future. But Brent Mania, he's always on he's online with, with, with the fury. Unless he's watching wrestling, Brent Mania is always there. He's always there. Um, how many more movies do I want to look at? Did I look at Dune Part 2 already? Yeah, I already did. Let's look at Bob Marley, One Love, just for, for S's and giggles. Ooh, not bad. Wow. Almost 100 million domestically. Internationally, pretty close to 100 million. But worldwide, 176 million. That's a $200 million movie after DVDs and whatever else. Wow. People want that movie. They want that good feeling of Bob Marley and the music. And that dude is an icon. That dude is an icon. That's interesting. All right, let's look at Monkey Man real quick. Brent Mania, stop with the self-deprecating words. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm not trying to treat you like treat you like a kid, but stop it. I know I do it too. I do self-deprecating words a lot. But get them out of your vocabulary as best as possible, bro. As best as possible. You're awesome. It's like Wet Movie 1 does it too, and it just pisses me off. Ugh, I'm a nerd. I'm an idiot. I'm a this. Shut up. Uh, a nerd doesn't have 60,000 subscribers. A nerd doesn't get, you know, an idiot. Well, for the most part, an idiot doesn't get, you know, six to 10,000 views on every video. Come on, man. People love you. And even if they watch to hate you, they're watching. Get rid of self deprecating words. All right. So, Monkey Man's been out eight days. Domestically, he's made 15. Internationally, only 3 million. Worldwide, 18. Yeah, um, that's not a big movie or a big title. And to be honest with you, I would think that Monkey Man would do better internationally than it would domestically in the United States. That's just my opinion. But it, I believe it's an Indian film. Is it Indian? Or what do they call it? Bollywood? I don't know. Maybe it's Bollywood adjacent. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, that'll round out at 20 million at least. Or 25 maybe. But yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, his friend's name is Gabe. I think they did a video. Gabe's a cool dude, but I you know, he's becoming an alcoholic. And, um, you know, like I, I worry for him, you know, cause I, I seen what my brother did to his life and Gabe is an, an alcoholic. Definitely. So I just worry, um, guys, this is one of my favorite websites. It's called one five, three news. And, you know, you can't see a lot of these videos or topics on YouTube. You can't really see it cause it's either conspiracy based or they would call it misinfo or whatever. But I just wanted to quickly go on here. I don't think I'm going to be able to watch any videos because it, it won't, will not work. It'll shut everything off. Um, but I just wanted to see the latest videos of what they're talking about in the conspiracy or whatever world from one five, three news. So let's look at some of these titles, Sydney attacker caught on cell phone. Oh, that's somebody with a knife, right? They break down, you know, on this website, a lot of people break down all the events. 
and they show video footage, whether it be of c- possible crisis actors or manipulated footage, or, you know, sometimes when something really bad happens, you won't even see the video, you know? Oh, they live streamed it, you know, on the internet, but you can't find it on YouTube or you can't find the actual live stream anywhere. And most of the time it, it's on this website, you know, it's called 153news.net. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, check it out. I'm not saying everything is correct and real, but it's it, it's at least an alternative site that you're going to get a, some some interesting stuff. Sydney attack saved the baby. What do you do next? What will you do without 153 news? That's right. They're always struggling for money and to stay afloat. They run it from like Mexico or somewhere else. They've been on the run this website for years and he barely gets the money to keep it going like every month. I mean, you know, that's what they tell us. Um, Social security cards and benefits for migrants. Notre Dame fire, suspicious activity on the roof before fire. Uh, My country, tis of J-E-W-S. Um, Arsonist caught setting Notre Dame on fire, really? These are going to be some interesting videos to watch (laughs) when I get some time. Uh, Fly Me to the Moon, an official trailer. I'm sure that's about fake space stuff. Um, Cops and Karens tried trespassing me from the whole town. Oh, my goodness. DJ and raving zombie sheeple dancing in front of... Look at all the symbolism. Look at all the symbolism in that one. Global Pandemic Treaty. Bible Secrets. Sydney Hospital Experience. How dare you? Greta Thunberg, how dare you? How dare you? I'm going to go drink my Mountain Dew in my car. Uh, Sorry. Ooh, that was a weird book. Great Reset Economic Warfare, Bird Flu, Shyop, and Bird Calling, Inconvenience Truth. He said symbolism and not symbology. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to read every, every one of your, your, your things. Um, maybe I'll give you, you all about 10, 15 minutes, and we'll just talk about what you guys want to talk about for like 10, 15, 20 minutes. I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of these videos, the titles. Welcome to Gestapo Groceries, Bait Phone Experiment, J-E-W-S Dancing, for Trump, the usual ills promote the Moscow concert, the staged Moscow concert. See, interesting stuff. Not saying it's real, but I, I like to see people's perspectives. And then I do my thinking, whether I see something or I don't. And then I then I come to a, a decision whether I agree with them or I don't. Or I want to do more research. Sometimes that happens. The new normal. Oh, that's for, are they in a gym? And are girls filming in the gym? That is the new normal. Uh, My lunch break, artificial intelligence exposes our history. They are changing history. They're rewriting it on Wikipedia. They literally got like in the movie, the 1984, they have like a truth council where they are manipulating and rewriting history on Google on Wikipedia, because as the generations go along, you know, if they erase some of this stuff or make people look crazy or whatever, you know, 20 years from now, because it was changed 20 years earlier, people are going to go on Google or Safari or whatever these websites are, and they're not going to know the actual truth. Like the guy that invented the V-A-X-I-N-E, the MRNA, they changed him. They changed his name. They said he wasn't the inventor of it because he spoke out against the way they were using it. And he went on podcasts. They called him a conspiracy theorist. They took away his title. And then they said that his assistant created the MRNA design. And they rewrote history, man, for, for that gentleman. Um, they really did. 
but people ain't going to believe it. I, I, I looked on Google. That's not what it says. I looked on Wikipedia. That's not what it says. Tennessee chemtrail, major events surrounding the April 8th. Apo- oh, you know what? I want to watch apocalypse videos when I get off of here. Government siege. Oh, this video, I've seen this video. You guys may have never seen it before. I don't know if it's this exact video, but they shot a rocket with GoPros or whatever filming. And the rocket goes and it appears, it appears to hit something. Like it goes so high and you could see the land. It had like three or four GoPro cameras or something. And then all of a sudden it stops and you hear it go. Like maybe it hit a dome. Maybe it hit the firmament, and then it just spins. And it doesn't even look like space when it goes up there. But um, it's an interesting thing. Man. It's an interesting video uh, to watch, guys. It, I don't, it's just crazy, dude. And did you guys notice that people were trying to make rockets in their garage? I think there's movies about it or stories about it. And people are trying to go up in space or take cameras up there, and then the FBI, the government, are like arresting all these people that are creating these devices. They literally are. They're arresting all of these people. Oh, you don't have, you know, you cannot, you know, put a rocket or a GoPro camera in into space. You can't do that. You don't have clearance. You can't even put your drones more than, you know, 2,000 feet or 1,000 feet or whatever it may be. We have laws. You know, we got airplanes to worry about and they're controlling everything. So how can we study? How can we study beyond what they tell us if we're not allowed to do it? How do we do that? Corporations and, and everything, the law of the land controls everybody. It's it's insane. I don't know. Sorry, I went on a rant there for a second. The final complete. Gaza stuff at the music festival. So sometimes they put all the videos that they can find online of these events and they put them all in one video where you watch them all. And this one is like three hours and stuff like that. The Trump Bible. Oh, that's right. He he started selling the Bible, huh? (laughs) Remember many years ago, he walked out during the riots or whatever. He walked out, out near the church with the Bible and he's like, taking pictures with it, <laughs> and it kind of was reminiscent. You know, they were calling him Hitler. I think I even made a video. Is Trump Hitler? <laughs> Cloud seeding. Putin, the crypto. <laughs> Candace Owens, yeah, that's an interesting, the Candace Owens stuff. I kind of started to like Candace Owens a while back. I liked a lot of her views. Not all of them, but I liked a lot of them. Um... The who agree with the faith leaders. Oh, the Baltimore Bridge stuff? Ooh, that's, that stuff is interesting, man. When you watch the video footage, the way the light goes out on the on the on the boat, and then it comes back, and then right when the light comes back, it starts turning. And then if you watch it in full speed, you can literally see the trajectory trajectory go from one angle. So after the light goes out and it comes back on, where they took over the boat somehow, all of a sudden it goes, it goes, and then it hits the bridge and everything and it collapses. It's insane. It's insane. And there's multiple angles of the bridge collapse. Were they prepared for it? Were they ready? I don't know. But it's, it's funny how they got multiple angles of the bridge. You know, they film a, a bridge constantly with multiple cameras, you know, 24 hours a day. But yet when these music events happen, when these music events happen and people got injured or KIL'd or whatever, you can find no footage. But yet there's... A thousand people in the event with cameras and cell phones. And and yet you can only find one video footage online of somebody in a bathroom. Ah, oh, I'm afraid. And I'm not trying to make joke of the real things that happen. I'm just trying to explain the video footage thing. It, it doesn't make sense. 
you know, and then some of these real big events, there's camera footage everywhere. In terms of like, you know, buildings or this or that, but then the actual events with human beings that would have cameras, um, it's because people are not going to turn on their camera when it's happening. They people film people yelling at each other every day in the streets, across the street. They just start yelling. They want to get a viral moment. So if one of these events happens at a concert, there should be a ton of video footage. But again, YouTube will scrub it all or whatever. You have to find it on alternative platforms. Again, there's a lot of things to think about, man. And then apparently the black box is missing on the on the boat. I don't know. You guys let me know. I haven't really dug that deep lately. See, that's why I need to watch these videos so I can hear other people's perspectives. So that's what I'm going to do later, whether it be today or tomorrow. I'm going to watch all these Baltimore bridge stuff. Oh, yeah, that's the Russia music hall of the event. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this off screen. Um, we're good for now. Let me see what you guys are saying. Let's hang out and talk for a little bit. Anything you guys want to talk about? Anything you guys want to say? Um, hopefully there's your answer to Justin Falzon. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I missed something. You see that clip of a guy holding up that shard of glass to the camera and the UFO is there? They live style. I haven't seen it, man. Mikey's based. I thought this was America. I don't know what that means, Tom. But based is a good thing, though, right? Based is a good thing. That means like I'm intelligent or I'm smart or I don't know. Explain. Sorry, sometimes I, I don't understand all the meanings of all the words. Um. Any ladies, Phil McGroin? Are you talking to me, Phil? Do I have any ladies in my life? I, I mean, I have a... I, I don't know. I mean, I have a, girls that I talk to on the phone and, you know, every once in a while, like on video chat and getting to know them. I definitely have a few, but in all honesty, I'm, I'm alone and not much is happening, man. But um, I'm hoping to go out to conventions. I can start meeting some of these girls because some of the most of the time they live far away. And but we're just trying to get to know each other and hopefully enjoying each other's company. Um, but yeah, apparently I'm blessed, and there's a few girls that are into me or attracted to me or like me. So I'm very very lucky. Got to have some more in the podcast. We all love having beautiful girls on my podcast. I want a harem of girls on my podcast. <laughs> That's the dream, right? For any man, a harem of girls. Corey Feldman tried to have a harem. What did he call them? He called them the angels. I got to, when I talk to Corey again, I got to be like, Corey, why, Corey? Why? <laughs> uh, but everybody wants a harem. Oh, and the script for Dude, Where's My Car 2? had my character running a harem of women. Me and my other character, uh, the cult members, uh, we had a harem of women in Florida in the, the initial script for Dude, Where's My Car 2? <laughs> they, apparently they had a rental car um, in that movie. And then they get off the plane, like in Florida. And then they're like, you know, after a night of partying or whatever, they're on a plane and they're in Florida. And then they're like, oh, we got a rental car slip. Dude, where's my rental car? Then they go on another adventure. And then th they meet people from the other dude, where's my car? In all these scenarios. And me and um the other guy in the initial script had like a harem of women, you know, like in bubble wrap jumpsuits and stuff like that. Like we had our own cult. <laughs> the movie never got produced. The director passed away and... But still, dude, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, it's pretty awesome. And then Ashton and, and um, Sean, 
they also didn't agree on the payment or they were going to do that movie again, you know, so it just didn't, it just didn't happen. It didn't happen. Um, Baltimore bridge is just capitalism failing epically. So you don't think there's any manipulation by maybe foreign entities or corporations or or anything you, you don't think there's any possible technology manipulation or something like that it is the biggest shipping port and it did stall and cost the shitty billions of dollars and and then out of nowhere america is going to pay for it not the insurance company you know oh well, america or biden's like hey we'll pay for it it don't matter we're going to pay for it biden spends money like we we have plenty he doesn't care. Biden, in my opinion, it feels like he's shelling out America. I, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. It's weird the way everything's being done. Just my generalized anxiety disorder, depression affects my life more than I want. Yeah, I try not to be on meds, Brent. I'm not trying to make people feel bad for me. I'm just saying, ah, oh, you're awesome, Brent. We love you. Wow, how far am I behind? Wow, I am far behind, dude. Wow. Um, do I like beans? I do. I kind of don't have a lot of money sometimes for food. And I kind of have to live on rice and beans sometimes because they're kind of cheap and they're filling. But I do like beans. Um, I'm trying to actually get into amateur boxing this year. I've been doing it a while. Oh, that's awesome, Justin. It's a good workout for you too, man. Okay, Tom said base is terrific. Thank you. Bruins, Penguins, 8 p.m. should be a good matchup. You know what? Is the UFL, UFL on right now? I wanted to watch the next UFL game. And they also got UFC tonight, 300. I'm not really into it. But I'll check out the – is the card for UFC 300 good? You guys let me know. I may check it out. I kind of want to go watch a movie, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that today. But I don't know the card of UFC. Whew, all of a sudden, I got dizzy. Calm down, Mike. Penguins, 8 p.m. I like hockey. I like watching hockey. When I when I've, I think I've been to three hockey games my entire life, they are fun. I love hockey games. Especially when you got decent seats. I mean, if you, I went to a Mighty Ducks game many years ago with my friend Eldon because they were in the Mighty Ducks and they opened up the stadium and whatever. But um, we had, I was, unfortunately, they were down there, but I was kind of like, woo. And the Mighty Ducks stadium, whatever they called it, the egg den or whatever, it was, it was like, ah, I thought I was going to fall every time I went down. Ah, hold me. You have some good lookers, Michael Ray Bauer. That is true. I love all women, man. That's probably one of my problems. I think all women are beautiful in some aspects. I just really do, dude. I just love women. Michael, the PIMP. Uh, you can't say that anymore nowadays because not what I am. I just want to fall in love. But I love beautiful women. I love getting to know them. It doesn't mean anything has to officially happen. But I just, I never really had a mom growing up, you know, like, a mother figure per se. And I just grew up like loving the image of like a woman, you know, they're just so beautiful. Cause I never had a lot of women in my life or like motherly figures. Maybe I got a mom disorder. You know, what do they call it? Mommy issues. I don't know. Maybe I do. Who knows? Plenty of other people have daddy issues. <laughs> Will you be officiating cool duders and wet movies wedding? They're getting married. Did they make, a joke where they're getting married did they i haven't watched some of their videos recently slug is saying was faith mystic an escort not for me no no um she does events and does things and she travels and she whatever else she does honestly i don't know you can assume you can assume, but for me, no. 
she was in town doing an event and she got a, a hotel in my area and she wanted to hang out with me. So we hung out for a few hours, but no, no, not for me. I, I still love her though. She's awesome. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. Um, yeah, but again, I don't, I want to put that on her, you know, where people think she is one. Again, who cares? Whatever people do with their own time to do whatever, it's not our problems. It's not our problems. You know what I mean? Unless I was her P-I-M-P. Damn, girl! You better give me that money. <laughs> no, it's not. That ain't me. Mikey, what do you think of Ashton and Mila getting canceled? What did they get canceled for? I forgot what it was about. It was something about money, wasn't it? Or was it about them supporting Danny? Was it about them supporting Danny Masterson? I think that might have been what it was about, right? Because they wrote a letter or they supported Danny. Was that what it was about? Look, I mean... That's a tough subject, man. Like who should who you should support based off of allegations, even after they're convicted. You know, like you still can love people. You cannot agree with whatever they did, but you can still love them because if you are a God fearing person, you still gotta love these people, even though they, they did some really bad stuff and wrong stuff. Cause you know what? If everybody turns their back on them. There is no redemption story. There is no redemption story. So you have to love and you have to support as best as possible. The, the issues with that is, is that everybody's watching. And I guess the support was made public or whatever. And, you know, some people, it rubs people the wrong way. You know, so. Hey, thank you, studious. Oh, stud, fidious. Dark shittyish. Selling out of foreign ports is the ultimate loophole. I gotta look into that. I've heard about that other stuff. Yeah, 99 cent store is closing, man. But nothing was 99 cents anymore and nowadays. Oh my goodness. <coughs> I ate a bunch of chicken and rice yesterday. And I had salsa. And boy, that salsa is really meshing with my esophagus today. Um, <clears throat> I, sh I shouldn't have had anything spicy, man. The older I'm getting, I need to realize that stuff, dude. Um, yeah, 99 cents or nothing's 99 cents nowadays. and But it, it is an icon. It is a staple out here. And I could still get like bread and some decent things for like a dollar and a quarter as compared to $2.50 or Three dollars at other locations, so I'm gonna be sad that it's gone. But who knows? But thank you for mentioning that, Justin. I'm 207 pounds. I need to get under 200 pounds for cruiser weight. Um, I, I'm sure you know what to do, Justin. But when I was playing football, I had to make weight. Technically, I wasn't playing. I was like third string, but I did end up playing against an NFL player. Uh, in the championship, or not the championship, the like, what was it, the wild card playoffs, Bell, I'm sorry, not Bell, what's the name of that school, modern day, no, <laughs> whatever, but I played against an NFL person, he trucked me for a touchdown as I became linebacker at the end of that game, um, he played for the Atlanta Falcons, well, I, I can't think of names again, um, it's been a while since I talked about him. Whatever. Um, but yeah, drink, uh, sp keep spitting. I had to make weight for a lot of games. You know, I, I would spit. I would dehydrate myself. I'd keep spitting. I wouldn't eat, you know, for a day, like 24 hours before just to make weight. <laughs> you know, it's crazy stuff, dude. And if you did eat, it would only be like broth. Remember beans from even Stevens? Yeah, I think he hit me up. Um, 
he's doing a project or something. His name is Stephen as well, Stephen Lawrence. Um, he hit me up with an email. I think he's doing a project, and they want me to be a part of it. But unless it's SAG official or contracted through Screen Actors Guild officially, I can't be in it, if that's what you're referencing. I'm a big hockey fan. Let's go Rangers. Do I like beans? Again, I got asked the same question. Uh, how was your time on Empty Nest TV show? That was a really fun experience. Um, that was like one of my first early jobs when I still had that little kid voice. And then I did such a good job on the f that first episode. It got so many laughs that they brought me back for a second episode. And they wanted me to be a part of the show every once in a while, like a, a recurring but my voice changed. It got higher octave. And then the writers didn't know how to write for me. They wanted me to recreate the first episode that I did when I was on a baseball team and it didn't work. And so it just wasn't funny. Whatever they wrote me, whatever they were giving me, my voice wasn't, I started to grow. I had a growth spurt within those like seven months, man, when they did the next episode. <laughs> Dude, that was like right at the, I wish I was, I started acting in like 85. I literally wish I started acting in like 85 when I was like 10 years of age. I technically started when I was 12 and 13. Um, I did some stuff before that, you know, like at a younger age, like an episode of the A-Team, but I really technically started in like 87, 88, when I was like 12 or 13. And I wish I would have started when I was 10 because it took a couple of years till I got like my first job or two. And if I started when I was at 10, I'm sure I could have got a, I, could, I would have looked younger and I would have got a lot more cool parts. Maybe I would have been in the Goonies or something like that. You never know, but still, man, uh, that's a dream that I missed. Cause I kind of had a growth spurt from like 13 to 14. Like that was crazy. Um, do I like Mr. Bean? Yeah, Mr. Bean. I love that movie Rat Race that he's in. It's a race. I hope I win. Mr. Bean. I love Mr. Bean. Oh, 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 De Depeish Complex. Is that what I have? I don't know. Wrote letters for Danny. Oh, yeah. So we're back on the other subject. Yeah, they wrote letters of support for Danny. Yeah. Daniel Alexander, what's up, brother? So jealous the Red Wings got Patty. I don't know much about hockey, man. I do like hockey. I used to collect hockey cards in the 90s. Uh, ooh, that sea gas, dude, from all that salsa and chicken and rice yesterday. My goodness. My body doesn't handle gas anymore correctly. Some days I get really sick. And then I just, oh, it's so tough. Justin, yeah, your story about being trucked. Yeah, well, I was trucked, bro. Damn, what was his name? Jamal, Jamal Anderson. That was his name. Jamal Anderson. Yeah, man. At practice that week, we had injuries at linebacker. I was a right tackle. No, I'm a right guard on the offensive line. I was like third string. We had injuries at the linebacker position at North Hollywood High School. Um, so all of a sudden, they needed somebody to go in there and basically play uh, like middle linebacker. And they're just like, they threw Michael in. <laughs> they're like, hey, for a few plays, go in there, Michael. So I went in there, just started running around, following the ball. Then I knocked the ball out of a tight end's hands one time. And then another person, another running back ran up the gut. And I, I got somehow a good angle and I tackled him. So they were like, Michael's the best, you know, like middle linebacker that we've had post these injuries. So we went into the, the playoff game. Um, damn, what's the name of the school? I can't remember it that Jamal Anderson played for. I thought it was Bell. Might have been modern day. Ugh. But um, so long story short, it's the end of the game. We're down by like. 24 or something. There's like three minutes left. Then our middle linebacker like injured his calf again and he was playing all game and they just took him out. They're like, the game's over. So who do they throw in? They throw in me. They're like, Michael, get in there. You played decent. You had a couple of 
good plays at practice this week. Michael, get in there, you know, end the game. And they're driving the ball and they're running back with Jamal Anderson, who later played for the, for the Falcons, <laughs> you know? So we're at the like 12 or 11 yard line. I go in there at linebacker. And then it was like the first play, they hand the ball off to Jamal Anderson and he runs it pretty much up the gut. And then he kind of jukes. And then I just, I, instead of going forward, my dumb butt was backing up, like letting him run the yardage. Then I, I got hit like at the five yard line or four yard line. And then he just trucked me and ran me into the end zone and I fell on my back. And then he just stood on top of me. And then literally he goes, F you donkey lips. F you donkey lips. He knew who I was. I guess they probably talk about it at school, you know, because I was working on the show at that time. And it was just pretty funny, man. And then many years later, he went to um, like a reunion thing out here with like, what was the guy's basketball player's name? Gilbert, Gilbert Arenas. Because I used to play basketball at the park, Victory Vineland Park with Gilbert Arenas. And um, he was in the league that we would pay for and play at the, the park league. Then I think him and the other brothers, there were two brothers with curly hair that played for Grant High School. And Gilbert Arenas played, I believe, for Grant as well. But long story short, they had a reunion of like the Valley, like, athlete superstars so a lot of athletes showed up and had like this valley reunion so i went there because i knew a few of them you know that became superstars so i i I talked to gilbert again and you know it was kind of cool and then i saw jamal anderson and i relived my story of of when he trucked me and he's like oh yeah i remember that that's right i remember that how you been how you been i saw you in this movie evolution this and that you know it was a really nice event it's a really nice event it's very nice to be remembered by real real special people, you know, it's just such a blessing in my heart. Um, yeah. What was the name of the dance? Oh, the dirty bird (laughs) for the Atlanta Falcons. Remember that the dirty bird? I love football. I love football. That's why I think the UFO is going to start maybe at four o'clock. I kind of want to watch it. All right, guys, I'm going to be getting out of here. I'll give you guys another eight minutes. Again, if you feel like if there's some super chats or donations or memberships, if I earned it, let's get them through right now. But if not, no worries. Or any last-minute questions or subjects you want to talk to me about or get my perspective. And let me just quickly thank everybody that's donated today because, honestly, I really thank you all. So we got addicted to ubiquity, became a member. Brett Mania, gift and memberships. Um, Lolo for the $10. Thank you so much, my dude. And another $5 from Lolo. Crumb became a member. Maybe that was the gifted membership. I don't know. Flat Cat Jessica got a super sticker. I still don't know what they are. Brett Mania, Gifton, and then Waver buying a super sticker. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all are pretty awesome. And I'm so happy to know that even though this computer is not the best and I can't do really a lot of graphics or anything, I'm at least proud to know that I have a semi-working computer that I can at least come online maybe once a week and go live and talk to you guys. And hopefully I'll bring back the podcast with some, some, some guests that you guys might enjoy. Um, I got to put in some work and I've been struggling putting in work beyond my regular life, which I'm trying to fix. So it's hard to put in the work for my online YouTube life. I don't have all the energy all the time, but I'm doing my best and I love you guys. And, and I appreciate you. Hey, Donnie Darko, what's up? What was Gilbert like? Oh, Gilbert's awesome. Um, doesn't he have a podcast now? Uh, is he outspoken now? Does he do a lot of clickbait or something? I think I've seen some videos where he's like, you know, clickbait. But he made probably 50, 60, 80 million dollars in his career. So proud of Gilbert, dude. Um, Epic trash talk moment. Dude, Tom, that's why some people don't believe my stories. They're like, they're too unbelievable. 
and 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 maybe that's why I'm so humble because they happened to me. Maybe I embellished the moment like a little bit, but every actual event happened the way I presented it. And they're epic because I take everything as an epic moment and I remember it forever. And I, and I, I know it's an epic moment, you know, so I've had so many, that's why I'm so humbled. I'm so blessed to be alive. I'm so blessed to still be here. And I just have to live my life that way. And I respect and love every moment I've had, whether they be bad moments or good moments. I remember them all, but I've had some amazing moments. And, 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 and that was one of them. When he won the Super Bowl, I knew who he was. I was like, there you go. I was so happy for Jamal. I'm a Raider fan, but I was doing a dirty bird watching the Super Bowl. I was like, yeah, you get it, Jamal. You know, raised up out here in the San Fernando Valley, representing. Britt became a new member. Oh, thank you, Britt. And hopefully we can talk about the conventions and stuff more on social media because I still need some help and some answers or whatever. I appreciate you truly. Waver, this was great. You're great. You're great, Waver. Thanks for putting up with me and not, you know, presenting the names of the people that are just kind of bothersome a little bit in my life. I appreciate you. Michael G, do you watch these things after you end them? I ain't got the time, bro. I don't got the time. But um, maybe I should. I, I kind of don't even go to the, to the, what are they called? The, the, the comments. I'm so afraid sometimes to read comments and to see something that'll spoil my day or whatever. UFL is pretty good football, spring football. You're right. So no, not really. Sleuthette was gifted a membership to somebody. Oh, the Unbelievers. I can't even speak. <clears throat> the Unbelievers podcast. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks for a great show. Can't wait for more happy alien episodes. I got to check out your podcast as well. Is it here on YouTube? I do want to support as best as possible, and my apologies, but everybody, please go check out the Unbelievers podcast. I don't know really what it's about, but it sounds up my alley with the Unbelievers podcast. Thank you for the super chat, and maybe one day in the future, I kind of ask for guest fees to be on podcast because I need the money. I don't have a job. I ask for guest fees, but you know. Maybe I'll be on your podcast or I'll be invited or we'll figure it out. I appreciate you truly. Thank you. We look forward to more happy aliens. Yeah, hopefully, what's today? Today's Saturday. Let's hopefully by next Saturday, I'm going to have a guest. But it, it won't be with all the graphics. It may be with a couple of websites where we talk about the topics, but it might be more interview based or hanging out based because I can get a person on screen. It won't be two separate videos. It will be for members only. No, should I make it for public and do an after hours for members only? Maybe I should do it that way. Like a, some of the interview and the hangout publicly, then after that, do an after hours for members only instead of backwards. I was doing it backwards. I was doing it for members only first and then Showing some of the video, it just didn't work. That's the way I have to do it moving forward. 405 Cowboy, what's good? Uh, Britt said, I sent you an Instagram message. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you, truly. Um, <clears throat> sorry, so many things are popping up. Anything that pops up below me is a good thing. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day, handsome. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate you, truly. Waver. Michael, you see where WWE is going back to more of real wrestling show and breaking away from Vince. You know what? I like where it's going. I liked WrestleMania. I really did. I enjoyed it. And then I think I watched Monday Night Raw. And there was a moment where The Rock handed Cody Rhodes something in his hand. And he goes, are we having an earthquake? He handed Cody Rhodes something in his hand and he said, don't you ever disappoint me again or don't, or don't you ever break my heart again? And then Cody Rhodes didn't reveal what it was. 
I'm not really into wrestling lore or KFAB or whatever they call it, but I was thinking, is it a PED test? Did Cody Rhodes like take PEDs to win the match versus Roman Reigns? Is it a key for the Undertaker because the Undertaker appeared? What was it? Then somebody mentioned it might have been a lighter because Cody Rhodes, I think his bus a couple weeks earlier caught on fire. And then Rock is telling him, like, don't you ever piss me off again? And I'm giving him a lighter. Maybe, I don't know. Interesting theories on that. You guys let me know what you thought in the comments below. Maybe I'll read it later. WWE is making wrestling cool again. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm getting out of here. I've been online for two hours exactly. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. Thank you, every single one of you, for the support. I love you all, truly. Please know this, and you're special. You're amazing. And leave the rest of the day right now with no worries and no concerns. And, I, you know, you can put in the work on Monday. But for Saturday and Sunday, let's just realize we're alive and blessed and enjoy whatever the hell we want to without any worries and take your time alone from the people that are toxic or that are in your ear that bother you. Click. I'm not talking to you. Go in the other room, whatever. Handle your business. It's you time. I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for hanging out.